Welcome to Lift Your Legacy. My name is Jacob Rupp, father, husband, and rabbi. And each week we bring you an inspiring person or message to help you unlock your inner potential and create change that will impact the future. Thank you for listening and let's get to it. Boy, I'm excited for this one. I have on the behavioral expert, Yisrael Wall, and we really run the gamut today of how do you raise successful children? How do you become successful yourself? Some of the challenges that are unique to our generation, how to overcome them, practical, practical, practical stuff. Um, I, I gotta be honest, I love this conversation, and there are so many takeaways from this tremendously talented individual. Um, Get out a piece of paper and a pencil to to, to start writing down some notes, and uh, I really hope you enjoy it today. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast has been brought to you by me, Jacob Rupp, and Jacob Rupp's Consulting, uh, technically Lift Your Legacy. Now, I have to be honest, I help clients often get out of their own way, and something that has really held me up was exactly the same thing, that I was in my own way for months people have been saying you know talk about your coaching talk about how you help people share it etc and i had a really hard time putting it out there why because it's not that i don't think i do a great job i've seen amazing results from my clients you know 10x uh, more than that businesses fixed relationships um, helped people lose a lot of weight. People go on the path of, of making goals and fulfilling their goals. All of these things. I know I do it. And I've been in the coaching space long enough to know that there's a lot of people that don't really deliver. And the ones that do really deliver are, are worth literally their, their weight in gold because so often we're held back by stuff. And it's just like, if only I could get over that, if only I could work through that. And I help people do that. But for me, my big hold up was sharing that I do this in a big way, in a public way, especially on the podcast, because it's awkward. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm just making the podcast to, to sell you stuff or to talk about stuff. So that, that's not what I'm doing. Um, my point is like this. My coaching business is expanding. I'm taking on a few more clients. If you are someone that is struggling in the area of self-esteem, goal setting, health, relationships, or your, or your business, really, um, reach out. I don't know if we're a good fit to work with each other. What I can guarantee you is that we'll get on the phone for half an hour. Uh, I'll hear the kind of challenges you're having. You'll get a good feel, if you don't know me yet, of the kind of work I do, kind of program I would recommend for you. And if it's a great fit, we'll move forward. And if not, not. But I wanted to appreciate very much from the bottom of my heart, the fact that you guys all listen. I appreciate the amazing guests that I have, and I'm really thrilled to have broken through in my own life to the point where I could actually devote a segment to really make a somewhat long-winded, but I think very important advertisement. So if you want to reach out to me, the email is rabbi, R-A-B-B-I, Rupp at gmail.com, and the website is liftyourlegacy.live, and at lift, your leg- lift underscore your underscore legacy on Instagram, I think it's pretty simple. You, you know where to find me because you found the podcast. Thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. I am thrilled to have on behavioral specialist Yisrael Wall. Now, what's amazing about him is you know, I, I, like to, I like to sort of fancy myself as a high energy person. But as soon as I saw, he's a, he's a beast on LinkedIn. And as soon as I saw his videos and his content, I was hooked. I'm like, who is this guy? So um, thank God, you know, with the, with the modern uh, technology, we were able to reach out and found out that in a lot of ways, we're kind of kindred spirits. And I'm really thrilled to have him on today to discuss some of the, the ins and outs of the business that he has. What's really crazy about Yisrael is that he is able to create massive changes in, in an incredibly short period of time. So what we're going to talk about is not theory today. We're going to get into very practical stuff, both for you, for how we can change as individuals, and also he's really a parenting specialist and working with children, so how we can bring that over to our kids. Um, Yisrael, tell me a little bit about how you got started in this, in this area, why you're so passionate about development and helping out, uh, helping out the youth. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's an honor to be with you. And like you said, first time I got on the phone with you, I was like, this is it. This is it. I love this guy. The passion, the, the, the push. And the, 
I just love it. Thank so you. I, I actually started in, in the school system. I took a job about a decade ago, about give or take, working with a child who was struggling. And I really built myself up in the system, through, through the system. So I started working with the child who was struggling, had some more time, worked with other, other children in the school who were struggling, and started somewhat with academics, but quickly moved into a lot of behavioral, mental health kind of stuff. So it was in the system. And I think to answer your question, that's part of why I focus so much on that pragmatic end. And and it's important not to get this wrong because there are behavioralists that will focus solely on behavior and they'll focus on the behavior end. I'm not necessarily a major believer in that kind of world, just focusing behavior, but we need real change. And what I found is that we'll see children struggling, we'll see adults struggling, and say about 70% of my clients are children and adults. So we see people struggling and they can't afford to wait. They just can't afford it. They can't sit around and go for years of work. They need answers. They're struggling tremendously. And especially true when it comes to children. When it comes to children, what happens is they're in school and every day they're in school, they're struggling and every day they're failing. And it, it causes massive struggles and it makes the issue larger. So if we're gonna focus on longer term and long winded kind of approach, a lot of children struggle from that. So because I think I started in the system and that's where I started and I saw that desperate need for change right away, and that's when I focus so much on that pragmatic end. But again, we can't get confused there. Focusing on the practical doesn't mean that we're not focusing on core difficulties. If we wouldn't do that, it wouldn't be long-term change. We wouldn't get where we want to. But what it does mean is we got to focus and say real-world answers. What are we doing for this child? He's sitting in school. Every day he's going to school. He's struggling. How we get him out of the problem? Okay, so I I just – that that is – let's just dive in very quickly. What do you feel like is the biggest challenge? One of the the things that that I know I certainly pay attention to is there's this kind of like monolithic path. I don't know that word, but there's a one path. And – we spend so much time failing in terms of fitting in and not feeling like we're successful that I would venture to say that this problem is a lot more endemic or maybe we know how bad it is, but, but this is like a big issue. So I love this. Yeah, so, so tell I, me, I don't interrupt you, but no, you, no, so talk to you about that. Here, I what, love this point that you just made. T- and, tell me why, what happens? I'll, I'll tell you like this. I, I have children, teenagers and adults as well, whatever the case is coming into my office. I've never seen a child or an adult that didn't want to succeed. I've never seen it. I've never seen someone come to office and be like, you know, I've seen people who've given up. I've seen people who have no strength to go on. That's almost everyone who comes into the office. There's no will anymore. Because if you're crushed, and I think about it as those, uh, what are those things, whack-a-mole kind of thing, yeah. every time you're hit and hit and hit, you don't come out anymore to get hit again, right? You stop coming out. And when we create this kind of idea, and many times an inaccurate idea, of what success is. We create this kind of idea of of how you have to bring out your success. And this, uh, we could go on forever on this topic. This is in the education world, the way that we teach, the way that we're following a certain line of thought instead of bringing out children's strengths. We're trying to get them to follow our line of thought. And that's, it's an important topic. As well as behavior, so many, as well as in religion, you know, I'm obviously an Orthodox Jew. When we follow a one path of this is how you get there, instead of let's bring out each person's success, let's make them feel that they matter, we're going to have so much struggle. So when it's, yeah. So, so let, let's, let's start with that because I think that the, you know, kind of the elephant in the room is that both of us operate in a, you, you much more than me, you know, operate in a very, um, a very clear, like, like, like an old school community, you can say where there are very clear expectations, clear guidelines. Um, We are not sort of throwing our children to the wind and say, you know, kind of figure it out and whatever you pick is great. Um, So how, how do you start shifting in an environment where you do really want certain things from your children or as children, you know, we do really want to fit in and, and so to speak, you know, not be ostracized from a community. How do you, how do you rectify that with your individual drives and talents? Love the question. Really love the question because I think there's a basic mistake that so many people often make and it's something that comes up in my work all the time. And that's that we we think that the way we got to go, the way we got to get people to get to a certain way is by creating this kind of boundary and saying, this is what you got to do. And that's not really how it works, right? 
the only reason I try to do anything, the only reason I work on doing anything, the only reason I try is only because I believe that I can, right? If I didn't think that I can, if I didn't think that what I do matters, I'm over. I'm not stopping. I'm not, I'm not going to try anymore, right? So what happens is if we want to build our children, we believe in what we do, right? I'm an Orthodox Jew because I choose to be an Orthodox Jew, not because my parents are Orthodox, because I believe in this. And we want to get our children to follow on the path because we believe it's true. We got to make sure they feel and they get involved in this and they're empowered in this kind of thing. So instead of creating this kind of world where we created boundaries and say, you know what, you go follow these boundaries, this is what you gotta do. We gotta make them feel that what they're doing matters and what they're doing makes a difference and then get them to feel that success in that kind of world. Now, don't get me wrong. Children need boundaries. Children need right or wrong. Children, children need to, to and, and there, it's almost a you know, it's almost like thrown out. It's almost like we like to believe that we live in this idealistic world where we can just empower children. It doesn't work like that. Children do need right or wrong. They need to be held accountable, cause and effect, living with that kind of all important. But if we want our children to succeed and have an interest in things, first thing we got to do is got to make them feel that they matter. Instead of saying, follow this path, make them feel that what they do in this path makes a difference. Make them feel that what their actions make a difference. And that so it's this concept of the starting part. So this concept of rewarding when the child decides. I'm just trying to think. Like let's let's just do you know in terms of in terms of Jewish education or or just as a Jewish kid, whatever it might be. Let's say the kid loves baseball and you want him to get inspired Jewishly. And so I know that there's like again, it's a very clean example from probably about 25 decades ago. But uh, but but the the idea is you know it's like how do you deal with that? Your kid's super fired up about something doesn't happen to be, you know, learning Mishnayos and her, the, all of the normal, you know, all the normal kids and you're looking at your kid and you're looking at yourself and you're like, why, why isn't he just comfortable like in this world? So how would you, how would you start to build that kid? So there's a couple points in that question. It's, it's a large question, but there's a couple massive and most, you know, that just stand out that I want to bring up. The, the reason why we try things is because we believe we can. And what children maybe need today more than they ever needed is a feeling that they can. Social media, the, the, the way of the world where we're, we're inundated with messages. I mean, go back 100 years. What did you know of the world, right? You were living in this small place. Small things matter. Yes, you had, you know, you heard on the radio. I mean, that was the best that you heard and you heard things, but it was small. It was, and, and kids today don't have that feeling of what I do matters. And just building that feeling of success is a major tool in any area to get our children to succeed. It's definitely not a, it definitely it doesn't go against that, right? So making our children feel successful in any one area is beautiful. I think the parents sometimes worry about that too much. Our children live in a school, most of our children, right? Live going to school, going into an education world. That stuff means much more to them than sometimes they'll let, they'll let on. Feeling good about baseball, whatever it is, is great for them, but they're not going to run away from everything else. It's actually the opposite. When they feel that success, they usually find them getting more involved in, in that kind of world. So that's one piece that's very important. It's not against it. It's actually strong with it. But there's another point here that's so important. The idea, you know, years ago, it's still today, I mean, it was all in vogue, right? Everyone had to go for piano lessons, right? Or everyone had to go, right? that was that thing. And it gave them that kind of outlet, gave them that kind of space, that kind of place where they felt that success. And that was, that was so important. But it doesn't always work, although it does give children a place and an outlet and a place of success. And that's so important. It doesn't always work because they live in a world that's not always there, right? If my child feels like he can play baseball, it may be good for his self-esteem, but when he's going to school and feeling like a failure or he's struggling with other things that go on in his life, it doesn't turn that all around unless all he cares about is people, which is probably something we don't want at a young age. What we want to do is not so much create an interest and build our children through that interest as much as making them feel something I, I like to call indirect explanation. I would love to give an example of this because I, I think this is so important. Say whatever it is, right? Say I'm working with a child, a child and someone else had worked with the child before me and someone and they call me up somehow we're working together obviously confidential and all that but somehow we're working together and someone comes up and he comes over to me he says I, what you did with that child was amazing you know i'll feel good about it. if he starts waxing poetic i'll think i'll feel even better right but imagine he does say imagine he says look i worked with that child for i don't know four months 
and I tried this part and that part and that part, it didn't work. The way you realize to put this piece and that piece together, the whole thing came with the book. How do you figure that out, right? I'm going to feel like a million dollars, right? And the reason why I feel so good about that is because it's not just about being a direct compliment. It's really about because he built a picture that I'm actually living. So instead of it being about him saying something, which I automatically throw off and I don't believe because I, I just say someone's trying to make me feel good. He created this kind of picture that I now see myself, right? He said, I don't know how you did that. I worked on this and I worked on that and I didn't figure out the way you pulled that together, pulled everything together. That kind of world, what that did for me is that it created this world where I saw my success and I saw my, what I can do. And if there's ever a tool, literally, if there's one tool that I would push all parents with and something that comes up like every day, numerous times a day to work with parents on is really just this and I call it indirect explanation is the key of the way that we build our children is not by tell is not by getting them to get a hundred on a test is not by getting them to hit a, to hit a, you know, to hit a bunch of home runs is not by getting them any of those things. The way that we empower our children is making them feel that they can accomplish what we want them to accomplish. So whether it's when it comes to a world that, you know, we don't want our child children always to be involved in, right? All the, whether it's a social media, all the kinds of negative influences that we all struggle with as parents and that, pull and push our children in different directions. We want to get them away from that. What we want to do is want to make them feel successful in this. And we want to make them feel they can accomplish these goals. They can, they can get this. They, what they're doing in that world makes a difference. And this is one way where the world is so different than it used to be, especially in the Jewish world, lived in like the shtetl, right? How many people lived in your town? Small actions made a difference. Today, we live in one small world. And in what one person's success is, that everyone looks up and says, why am I not like that person? That person could be one in 10,000, one in a million even. And we start feeling the pressure from them instead of feeling, I'm making a difference in my world. If we want to build our children, if we want to get our children we want to empower our children. If we want our children to succeed, the one key, and if, if people can just take this message, is instead of getting them to succeed what we decide is success, make them feel that what they do matters. Make them feel that they're accomplished. And there's ways to, a child comes home with 100 on this. I don't care, the child could be amazing. He can be getting 103 on every test, right? With the extra credit. But instead of saying that's amazing, look at that question and say, how do you figure that out? I, I mean, I would have thought to answer something else, right? That's what builds our children. That's what makes them feel successful. That's what empowers them to accomplish. That's what gives them the oomph, the drive to go on. That's what changes them. This, I'm on a monologue over here, but no, you're, one no, more part right. here, okay? This is in, in the way they do it, but it's also in the education system. It, when we're teaching and we're trying to give our children one route of how to get things, right? We teach and we say, I'm gonna go on a monologue here. I apologize. I got to, I want to bring out a point because I think this is so important, so important and so key. Our education system, right? We, we, there's so many children, so many adults that go into the business world and succeed tremendously. And in the academic world struggled, right? And you can't give me any kind of garbage and say things like, oh, he was missing out on certain skills. You can't do that, right? They're brilliant guys. I mean, look at McCain, right? Whatever you say politically about the guy, but he like, graduated like 890th out of like 895, something crazy like that. He was a brilliant statesman. You may not like things about him, but when we're looking at, at these kind of things, and we're, we wonder why so many people go through school and on too well. So people throw out things, you know, in a very basic way and say things like some people are business savvy, some people are book smart. And, and right, and so some people do well with book smart kind of thing in school academics. Some people do well in the business world. And it's a fallacy because what happens is when, it is true, obviously, we see that every day, but the problem is because we're teaching in one way. Being book smart means I can follow someone else's logic. I can follow what you teach me. I can follow a book. I can follow a way it's laid out. Business savvy is the ability to use my strengths to figure things out. That's all it means, right? So when we're in the education system and we try teaching one way, then what happens is all we cater to is to the book smart kind of kids. We say, follow my line of reasoning. When we bring out someone's strength through this indirect explanation and everything else, bringing out their ability to look at things and using that to understand the lessons, using that to understand academics, using that to succeed, changes everything. Same thing, we're getting them to feel empowered by using their strength, making them feel they can't. I said enough, your turn. No, I, 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 I wanna repeat back what, I, what I'm hearing because there's a couple of really phenomenal concepts here. One of, the, one of the things is that we are 
you keep saying we define success, but success is more or less defined against this infinite scale because now we have social media. So you'll never be, the, 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 you know, the, the potential of what is uh, uh, possible is just overwhelming. So we have to drop that kind of stuff and start to focus on the individual. This concept you're talking about is, is trying to figure out how they were specifically successful in whatever endeavor they are in. And the, the net result of that will be that they see themselves as intrinsically valuable. 100%. And as a result, they're able to accomplish, the, meaning like, I'm just thinking to myself, like I operated under a, um, I operated under a principle that I was always bad at math and I was great at writing. And I was always, and I, and, and I managed to reinforce that my entire life because I was always able to, like writing came easy to me and I felt like the things that were easy to me, that's really what I was good at. But now what I'm realizing is that if I had d developed more confidence and, and the, there was a, a, it was an amazing story actually, a, a guy was a, a, a Navy SEAL that ended up going into math and ended up is now as an, it works in NASA and astronaut, whatever it is. And his whole motto was that he thought math was supposed to be hard, but he realized that math can't be harder than the Navy SEAL training. And so he, he, and he was terrible. I could, do, I could be a Navy SEAL. I could do math too, right? That's exactly, exactly right. So that, that concept that we can, we build that inner um, self-dependency to not wreck, to see kind of anything that we're trying to do as, just something I haven't done yet, but I could do, as opposed to really quickly trying to figure out how to box ourselves in. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, a thousand percent. That's what the growth mindset is all about, right? And that's, that's in vogue. Habits, that's can I, first of all, just say, I've been quoting that for years and I finally read the book. Everyone should <laughs> read the book. The book is amazing. <laughs> the right? book is amazing and the principles are amazing. It's, it's phenomenal to see the world move over much more, you know, more and more to that kind of world instead of, you know, taking people and putting them in this box, say, this is what you are and you, you are this and you can't go more. But what I can say is, I almost can't say this in the, on the air, you know, on a recording, but I've seen time and time again, so many people that we've, we've actually tested and we, we gone full tests on the, and the skills, a lot of skills were, were put as limited in different ways. When we can bring out people, we can completely change them. The growth mindset isn't just about making me feel good, making our children feel good. It's about actually being able to grow in areas where we didn't think was possible. That's what it really is about. And that's what changes things. That ability, exactly like you're saying, that, that feeling that I can. And, and, you know, I gotta say, we've moved a lot in that direction. There's so much learning in the education world that's moved. The education world, especially the past, say, 20 years, has moved dramatically, dramatic shifts, but we can be so much better. We can keep on going up. We can grow so much more. And, and that's what this is all about. I love that. So that, that idea of your identity being locked into not what you've been successful in in the past. Again, I'm just, I'm, I'm hearing this kid thinks I'm a brain and therefore I, I don't play sports because I'm a brain. Or, and, but then his body suffers. Or the, the kid that thinks, well, you know, I can only do this one thing right. It, it's just a, it's a manifestation. And again, especially as the parents starting to throw their own, you know, stuff on the kid. Well, I never, you know, got good grades. So therefore it's very important. You get good grades or I got good grades for you. You know, so, so, so we're throwing, which is a whole nother topic. Right. No, it's, 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 it's a crazy thing. I, I, I so that this isn't three and a half hours long, which could be that that's right. not a problem. What do you think to, to sort of switch into that when we start to work on ourselves. So let's say this is a brilliant concept and you're going to try to start, you know, building up your kids in a positive way and rewarding them and, and, and doing the indirect explanations of how did you figure this out? That's for your kids. But now we ourselves are a mess because we grew up kind of old school. We have a lot of self-doubt. We don't feel like we are, you know, that good or we can't fix ourselves. So how do you make that transition to like self-development and, and working on growing yourself? So yeah, like you said, we could go on forever because <laughs> there's so many topics here. And I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, capsulize something here. When it comes to personal growth, I don't want to go on a whole new monologue here, but when it comes to personal growth, there's a lot of mistakes and mistaken beliefs that we have besides for just the way that we were brought up. Um, you know, we believe too much in the idea of willpower that if I only want something so much, everything will happen. And there's scientific studies on all that kind of stuff. It's not even like, right? 
we believe in, in a lot of things that don't necessarily actually work in the real world. I guess that's a lot of what I do, you know, talking theory and trying to make it practical, what really works. Um, and when it comes to personal growth, I'm trying to capsulize this. this well, so so, so let's, let's knock out a couple of things that I think are maybe people don't realize that certainly I did not realize until I was really looking into it. One thing is that maybe you see the world in a, in a skewed way or that we all see the world in a skewed way. So, you know, the stories that we get growing up are not necessarily, again, I think marriage is a great example of that where you actually see a perfect example. family right. and you're like, Oh, you guys don't scream at each other or, you know, you guys scream at each other. That's an interesting way of relating. Right. So it's like, you know, so the first step is realizing that our, um, uh, the, the lattice through which we view reality is highly skewed based on our own experiences, our own predispositions and how we were raised. That's point number one. Point number two, which you were saying is that if I want to break out of that, for example, you know, someone that whose parents always worked for, for the man that always, you know, like, again, I just, it was my, I had this conversation with my mom and she was always asking, well, you know, what are the benefits like? And I'm like, well, who cares if the better, what the benefits are like, if I'm making enough money that I don't need to take the benefits, you know, and it's, and it, and, and that, that mindset shift was, you know, it took me 30 years to, to, to build. But the concept is that even the, the things that we think we need, such as if I just want to lose weight, if I just want to not scream as much as my kids, this concept of willpower, even that skewed. So your background skewed and the ways that you go about trying to- We're all skewed, right? Right. So how do you, how do you like, so I'm coming to you, I'm broken. What do, you, what do we start with? So, it's, so there's so many points. I'm just trying to mention a couple quickly over here. One is I like to tell people that, you know, there's actually no such concept as thinking out of the box, right? The expression is really, it doesn't, it's not really true. I can only think within my box. I can't think outside my box. That's not my box. We all have boxes. We build them as we're children. There's a famous, um, there was a famous experiment with the, the marshmallows and the string. There was this experiment where they took marshmallows and string to give to a whole bunch of kids. I'm sorry, a whole bunch of people. They said, build a tower, save this high, or whatever high it was. And so everyone starts building. And, and as you can imagine, people start first put like the, you know, the string, or maybe it was toothpicks. I don't remember anymore. And they put it together and then, you know, try to tie it up and put it again. And then it falls down but they tried again and again and again. And th what they found is that the, the ones who succeeded the most at this were, were um, kids in uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Kids in kindergarten did the best. The people who did the worst were architects. And that's fascinating because we had our idea of how things are supposed to be built and I can't move out of it. We build our kind of idea of the world and we need it for our personal living and there's a lot of positives to it as we, as we get older and as we learn what works and what doesn't work, we can't just work with this kind of not knowing where to go, we wouldn't be able to do it. But we cannot think outside our box. There's no such thing. What we can do is we can take people's per other perspectives and think about it inside our box. So we can look at what hear, hear a piece of information and say, hey, I didn't think of that. Is that true? Is that not true? Let me, let me work it out with my box. And then my box will get larger. But trying to just say, oh, I got it all wrong. Let me get someone else's mindset or this kind of like just being broad and open doesn't really work as much as taking information we didn't think of and trying to think, is that right? Is that not right? So that's one point. That's so important. I mean, I'm saying that's, that's super critical because again, and going back in a little ways, what we thought about is when we look at someone that has a certain character trait or has, has reached a certain milestone in, in their life, be it financially, be it in terms of the, the, the job they have, the, the company they built, the, the marriage they have, you know, it, we, we oftentimes don't superimpose our practical experiences on that box. So, you know, we see, I, again, just one thing that, that, that resonated profoundly is, you know, certain people feel like, you know, I have to be at the office the entire day in order for me to be successful. And then like my wife's holding me back. Or, you know, because everyone else in my office is super successful. So many topics to talk right? about. Right? And then you're like, well, but you don't have a wife that doesn't want to see you. You actually have a wife that wants you to be home. So, like, you have to, like, how do you, you know, so that, so. Um, so much. Go ahead. So that's the idea. Right. Like, so there's I, so much. I mean, literally, we can talk the whole yeah, day. Yeah, and maybe we should. Point. I just, I have clients backed up. But, yeah, but good. there's a couple points here. It, that's one, such an important point, Right. And, and it's a lifetime of change, we, we get, have to, but we have to start with that kind of mentality. We got to start trying to think along those lines, otherwise we'll never get out of our box. So there is that part, but I'm going to throw that point that we spoke about at the beginning of this, this thing and, and put it on adults as well. We do the same thing as children. You see, what happens is that we, 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 
there's this thing that we think about things like if I want something enough, I'm going to do it. And it's not actually true, although if I want something really, really badly, I'll probably end up doing it. But the reason why I'll do it is not because I want it so much. As much as what happens is when I want something so much, the small parts I actually want as well. What happens is when I have a goal, say I don't want to scream at my kids so much, right? So I have this big goal. Let me not scream at my kids so much, right? And then let's say I can even put it into small things, which many times we don't do, but I can make it into small goals. What often happens, and maybe the perfect example is the diet, right? Someone wants to lose weight. And take the person who needs to lose weight tremendously, right? I mean, the doctor says you're going to die if you don't, right? I mean, you're, you're about to have your explosion and ready to happen. You got to lose that weight. You got to do that exercise, right? So that's the example that so many of us struggle with for whatever reason. And in, almost invariably, and that's what makes the dieting business such a multi-billion dollar business, is there is no one diet that works, right? If it was, everyone would buy that one diet. What happens is we go on the diet, we, we lose some weight, maybe we'll lose a couple of pounds. A couple of weeks later, we sit in front of this dessert, I don't know, whatever it may be, and we look at it and we say, oh, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't, and we end up doing it. But, but, but what, are we crazy, right? I mean, I... I how important is it, my health, my family, one to 100, I don't know, 80, 90? How important is it to eat this chocolate mousse? 20, right? And then everyone would admit it, we fall for it. And the reason why, one of the great reasons for why we fall for it is we're, we train our mind to think, we learn from when we were young or whatever reason it may be, it's its own psychological uh, own, own world. But say when we're young, just using that approach for a moment, we feel cold. We walk outside, we feel cold to put on a coat. Because we say, I feel cold, so I'm cold, right? I, I feel hungry. I say, I'm hungry. So I, I eat. if I didn't use that, I would die of starvation, die of hypothermia, right? We need those kind of worlds. What happens is we take our feelings and we say, that's what I want. That's what I believe in. And we're going a little bit off topic, but this is important. So this is what I want. And then we sit in front of the piece of cake and I say, I want this piece of cake. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't want to eat it. I mean, come on. You want to eat that? No, you don't. But what happens is we take our feelings and we, take, and we believe our feelings, which is the whole CBT world, but we believe our feelings, we take our feelings, we believe them. Cognitive behavioral therapy for those that missed that. What's that? I was just translating CBT world. Yeah, no, so CBT is the, is the gold standard of, 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 of the therapy. So, but it's the idea of being able to talk back to your thoughts. But really, it's just the awareness is such a big key over here. Realizing that it's not what I want and but what do we do about that? What we got to do is we got to start feeling, I want to, and I feel successful by not eating that piece of cake. I actually feel good about it. And the reason why I feel good about it is because I want to lose weight. That's why. But I feel good about what I just did. It applies to all of us as adults. We want to work on personal growth. And we wonder why I keep on trying to do this, whether it's a religion, it's like it can be a spiritual thing, it can be losing weight, any personal growth. We want it so badly, we don't do it. And we know when we do it, we feel better. And one of the key reasons for that lack of success is when we're taking those steps, we don't actually feel good. And, and we tell ourselves, I don't want to do it. And they don't feel good about it. So of course I give up. I, I can't use willpower to do against what I want. And that's key. Willpower will not work long term to do what I don't want. What I, don't, what I want to do will always win in the long term. So until we start feeling that actually feel successful in the small steps that we do, actually feel successful in, in, in that kind of thing and feel like that's what I want because I feel that positive, it's very hard. Once I change that mindset and I start working with that, literally it changes everything. You are wonderful. I know that you probably hey. also have a job and clients and stuff like that. So very quickly, how do people find you? And follow up. Yeah, you can always reach out to me. You can hit me on my website, scrollwall.com, or hit me an email. And LinkedIn is where I've been focusing on a lot recently. See a lot of my videos, a lot of articles over there, and get a little bit of a better picture when I'm all that. Amazing. With God's help, we'll do another one of these because this was awesome. Thank God, too. This was great. Thank you so much for having me. There you have it, folks. Another inspiring episode. If you enjoyed this, I ask you to please share this with your friends and to like us over on Rabbi Rupp through Facebook or on YouTube. And the more that we're able to get these important messages out, the more that we can really make an impact in the world. So I encourage you, please, to stay tuned. Uh, we have a ton of amazing speakers coming up and also to tell your friends about it. Thank you very much.